Hello everybody, this is Diloop and welcome back to another Combinator tutorial. I got quite a few requests um, to show off the train setup that I had on stream and demonstrate how I did all the Combinators for that. Um, but we can't dive right into the trains right away because we need to understand some other concepts that are used in that build um, before we just dive into it. Uh, so the first thing on my list is to show you guys the SR latch. Now what an SR latch is, is it is a latch where you get two inputs, a S and an R, uh, for set and reset, and if S turns on, the latch closes, and if S turns off, it stays closed until it gets that R signal. This is uh, most widely used for steam setups, where you have an accumulator that is powered by solar panels, and when the sun drains, uh, hang on, do that. I can't get these accumulators to work with my current power setup because of uh, the infinite power, so I'm gonna demonstrate it with a constant combinator. But what you would do is you would have your accumulator tied to solar panels, and when the sun went down, you would want your, your regular power to supplement it if your power got too low. So you'd do that with the power switch. You would have this accumulator would be set to, it outputs an A signal. We can demonstrate that by just doing that. Um, it outputs an A signal in the form of a percentage, so it would be a signal of 0 to 100. Okay, so normally what people would do is they would just tie this accumulator into the power switch, and they would say, hey, if, if, a, if a is less than 100, or less than 50, go ahead and close. So once the accumulator dropped below 50%, power switch closes, your steam power kicks on, sends power into your base, but that would start charging the accumulators, so this power would go up and the switch closes. Once it stops charging, it'll go back down. So that's, it'll, it'll end up doing something like this, where it flickers on and off. And that's not something you want, because your steam power just kind of always stay on. Because it'll never go above 50%, it'll hover there. This is also used in oil to keep tanks in a range of numbers, rather than a specific number. So if we come over to the oil build that I set up a couple episodes ago, um, that is the issue that we have with some of these pumps when they're turned on is they flicker like this. So this would be a latch that would kind of solve that case as well. Uh, so how do you build it? Well, it's pretty simple. We're going to need just three decider combinators. I'm gonna set them here, here, and here, okay? This first decider combinator on the front here is going to be our SR latch. We're going to set a couple of things. We're going to set S greater than R, and you're going to output an S on the 1. So what this is doing is it's taking an S signal. If it's greater than R, output an S. So this is set and reset. Then we're going to take a cable and feed it into itself. So what this will do is if it outputs S, it'll feed it back into itself and include it in this S signal every tick. <clears throat> the next thing we'd want to do is set a decider combinator to read the accumulator, and if A is less than 50, you're going to output your S signal as a 1. Then we tie these into each other, like so, and we tie this to the accumulator. This accumulator we will set to S rather than A, and what we'll see here is that currently the latch is on, so the, um, I'm sorry, less than 50. Why are you closed? Ah, we want S is, is uh, greater than zero, sorry. So if S is greater than zero, this will close. Right now there is no S signal, but if we drop this below 50, we'll see that the S signal turns on. This is inputting A on uh, an A20 and outputting an S, which is feeding into this combinator. So we're now getting an S on this combinator and we're outputting one S. And the reason for that is one S is coming out and feeding back into itself and it's reading that second S. Once this goes up above 50, we are still receiving an S signal on the output and the input, and that's because of this green wire. That is where the latch comes in. Did this not save? Come on. There we go. So we see that no matter what this combinator does, it doesn't, at this point, once the latch is on, it's stuck. It'll stay on until it gets a reset signal. 
So we would need the second combinator and we would say A is equal to 100. Once the combinator is fully charged, then you can turn off. And we'd give this a signal of R. So once this reaches up to 100, uh, we do got to tie them in though. Once this reaches up to 100, we'll see that the power switch closes. So what is happening is once the R signal is sent, it is in like this is getting a 1s because it's looping in on itself and R gets sent so it resets it because s is no longer greater than R. They were they are both 1 and equal to each other. So it it resets the latch. Once this drops below 50 again, it turns on. We're getting two s's as an input, one as an output. It goes above 50. It's still on, but you're no longer getting this S signal here. Then once it goes to 100 or more, the power switch turns off. It's a pretty simple concept, but it's kind of hard to wrap your head around. It's that signal looping into itself. Um, I don't, I was trying to come up with a better way to demonstrate it and I couldn't really think of it, but this is the basic premise of an SR latch. Uh, one of the biggest things here is if you have two separate signals coming into an SR latch. Uh, let's go ahead and demonstrate that. Where you want a B signal, for instance, that is you know, greater than a, um, 100, and you want that to reset it rather than the S signal. So you would have this tied in like so, and this would be a B, or uh, you know what, we could just say if B is greater than, greater than zero. And on this one, we could say A is greater than zero. So this is like an A-B signal, like that would be coming off of like an, an OR gate or something. Um, and if we, if we have both of these set to zero, we can see that the, you know, the latch is off. The minute this one goes up above zero, the latch should turn on. Uh, A is greater than zero. Ah, here. The latch will turn on. Once it goes down below zero, it still doesn't turn off. This one goes up closes the latch, okay? So what happens if we have both of these inputs on at the same time? Well, right now we're getting both input of one R and one S, and the reset was turned on first. If we turn off the reset, it latches, and if we turn that off, it stays latched, but the minute we turn on the reset, it, oh, now it's not turning off, huh? So the reason for that is we are getting a 2S as an input for this combinator, uh, but we're only getting a 1R, and that's because we're still receiving the S signal from here. Um, and if we turn that off, it then resets, and it won't turn back on. So it's kind of like reading whichever one happens first. Um, the way that I've always gotten around this, I know that there's a couple of methods. Uh, the way that I've always done it is instead of, you know, you output this 1R, I just throw in another arithmetic combinator here and on this arithmetic combinator I feed in the R and then feed in the like the R there and I set R times 2. So I, I'm actually outputting a 2R every time a reset signal is set sent. So now if this is on you know and it's getting two S's it's also getting two R's. This turns off you know, it's getting two S's. I think that's the easiest way to do it. There's a couple of other ways, but this is more of it'll always reset if that reset signal is getting sent. This is the method that we're going to be using in the train. So I, I did want to kind of cover that. I know it probably got a little complicated there, but that's it for this episode. Next episode, we're going to be covering uh, some logic gates and a couple other signal management techniques that I want to get into. So thanks for watching, guys. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to check out my Twitch. Link is in the description, and I will see you next time.